Hey guys, video number three here. This is Dimitri with Rubashka. And you probably already saw the um, second video about how to photograph clothes, part one. So this is part two. And I will show you just some of the basic gear that I have and the kind of setup I built to aid you in taking nice photos of your clothes. So as you can see, the first thing we got is the, the hoodie. This is the one I was ironing the other day. Um, it's all clean and it looks really fresh, no like wrinkles or anything on it. <clears throat> so what you wanna do is you wanna lay it flat and um, space apart the sleeves equally on each side. Um, there's, I see other brands and they sometimes put the sleeves onto the hoodie. I've done that before too. Sometimes they fold the hood over. I have come to realize that this, I really like this uh, setup the best with the hoodie flat, the the hood open like that, and then the sleeves apart because it kind of gives the shape of the hoodie, like it shows you the shape of the hoodie better. So I recommend doing that, but you could play around with that and see which, <clears throat> which way you want to set it up. So what I did after I set it up, I also, well, kind of before I shaped it, I took a, a lint roller. I'll show you that took one of these you can get these at the dollar store um and i took off all the lint and um sometimes you might have like a stray fiber or something so cut that with scissors get that out of there and the reason why you want to do that is because <clears throat> you want to avoid editing in photoshop as much as possible or in lightroom you know all the the dust and the specks off of the clothing because uh that's just more work and you want your photo to be as good as possible before you edit it a little bit. So I got this all set up and then I'll show you, this is kind of what I built over, this is only a month old, this setup. I used to have the camera handheld and while you can do it handheld, but what happens is your arms tend to wanna shake a little bit. So you have camera shake introduced into the, the photo which makes it a little bit blurry. So the best way to do this is to make a stationary setup. So I bought, I bought these pipes at a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot. You can just go pick them up. Um, I kind of just researched this online, how to build this. Uh, and I made my own version of it basically. Then I also got these caster wheels off of Amazon because I have a really small apartment and I try to maximize the space as much as possible. So I always roll it in here at the end of the day. So this is not staying out in the middle of the living room. So it's help helpful to have that. I, I wired everything up. Sorry, it keeps going out of focus. I wired everything up so I can instantly turn it on and off. What happened in the past was I didn't have, I didn't have a setup like this. So what I would have to do is I would have to take out these lights every single time and they were on tripods before and it was, I would have to plug everything in and it was such a hassle. So I was spending way too much time doing that and wasting time, you know, and no value is being added to the process. So I just went ahead and created, you know, this whole rig and I bought this mount on the internet for the camera and it works pretty great it wasn't that expensive you just clip it to here so that's all there and then you do want to have a dslr camera to take uh you know good shots of your product so if you have one of those that's you're already ahead so that's important to have this is just a canon 70d it's not that expensive it's not like a mark four or five one of those really nice cameras which is what i want later um, and it has the standard lens on it, so you don't even have to buy, uh, you know, other lenses if you don't need to. So one thing I have that's cool with this is I have the camera set up on auto timer. So what happens is, let me see if this will work. So here's, here's the flash right here. And it doesn't want to open. So... All my the camera already has all the settings on it and it's always it's always stationary here. I don't want to take this camera off the rig because I only use it for product photography and it's going to increase my uh 
setup time. So if I'm always taking this off and setting it up, it's just gonna slow me down. So this is all set up. All the settings are on there. There's the flash. You gotta uh, take this photo with flash. And I have this little uh, Canon timer. So it's, or not a timer, but a remote. So when I click it, let me see if, let me see if this will work. Like I said, this is all straight up footage. So yeah, there we go. You just click it and in two seconds, it'll take the photo. So there's no, there's no camera shake. I would, I would recommend if you touch the camera, wait probably five seconds before you take the shot because this rig will be shaking slightly. So you want that to stop, you know? So just, just wait a little bit if you, if you touch it or have to adjust anything. And then you got a photo. I usually snap a couple of them and then before I uh, import them into the, the computer. One other thing that I found out and I recommend is getting some, some really nice vinyl. This is just white vinyl I got online. I have used foam board, paper, and cloth before for taking photos. And all of them have been subpar for a, a good surface. I really like this, this uh, vinyl because look, you can step on it and it's not denting the background because you don't want to have rips and tears in this background. It'll make your editing process a little bit difficult in Photoshop. And also it just doesn't last as long. Like this, I mean, cars get wrapped in vinyl. So vinyl is very durable and it's self-healing. You know, it's not going to dent. I can walk on it and just kind of beat it up a little bit and, and it's going to be perfectly fine. You know, all the creases and dents pop out of it. And it was kind of expensive. I'm going to be honest. This, this vinyl was, I think it was like 50 bucks for a roll of it. And essentially all I really needed was this kind of square. I don't need the whole roll. But I couldn't find online uh, just, you know, a small square of it or a, or a smaller roll. So I had to buy the whole roll. I also actually, though, I did cut a piece of it off because I used that to take close-up photos on a different table. Um, separate from this, I take photos on my iPhone as well for product photography. But yeah, that's the setup. Um, again, and then I have the camera, the two lights. I also have these overhead lights and then... All of the lights in my apartment are also on, so there's tons of light coming in. So you want, in conclusion, you want the camera, you want a stationary setup if you if you can, if it's possible, I recommend that. Get a couple lights and then get the vinyl, I recommend that a lot. If you can't afford that, um, it's okay to just get a roll of paper and you know use it until it's getting be beaten up. And you could discard that, but this is this is a better and more permanent option. So that's the setup. I hope that helps you guys. Subscribe to the channel, like it, give me, leave me some comments if you see things that I can improve on. Let me know because I'm always trying to opt optimize this. Like right now, I can see probably three things I want to fix on this setup, but I will do that as I have more time and money. So there we go. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.